Hi hey guys, thought we'd have a little bit of a, uh, a look at um, how to fly a power kite from sort of starting at um, fairly well the basics since I've already got some videos on uh, how to power pack and how to launch and land. So I thought we might do something a little bit more where you start. This is an Ozone Imp, um, two, Imp Quattro 2.5 metre. Um, it's a little old and beaten up now. Now I've laid it out, edge onto the wind. Wind is coming from that direction. So that way, with the weights on the end there, that's pretty sort of safe to put out in the wind like that. I've laid, laid out my lines, let's have a look at that. Right, got my kite stake ready to go with a bit of tape on it so I can keep an eye on it. And got my handles laid out, all my lines laid out. These are the tops of my handles. That's where the power lines will go. Bottoms are the brakes. So I've laid them out, power lines to the centre just while I set the kite up. Make sure there's no knots or tangles in there. So I'll start, the outside one wants to be the brake. Check you don't have any, there's my brakes there on the trailing edge of the kite. Check there's no knots, all your lines are clear. And we do this by a little half hitch, a lark's foot, I beg your pardon, not a half hitch. We do this with a little lark's foot there, see what I've done there take the loop, take the standing part back through it, over the knot, and tighten. Bob's your uncle. Brakes first, then my power line. And these will often be numbered too, so you can match up the numbers. Again, check your bridles are clear, no snarls or tangles. Again, take your loop, pop your standing part through your loop, like that, over your knot in your, your kite line there, pull it tight, and that will jam up against the knot. Like so. Alright, now I've got my kite ready to go, just about rather than side launch it because there's not quite enough wind for that I'm going to launch it directly downwind so for a start I'm going to hook the brakes left brake and right brake around the stake like that take the weights off my kite keep a hand on the kite bring it round let it sit on the brakes. So I'm directly downwind, which I can get away with today because there's not a lot of wind. Now speaking of where you fly, you need smooth air. You, well, relatively smooth air. So you can't do this if you've got a line of trees right behind you or a stack of buildings. There'll be too much turbulence. Your kite will get caught up in it and it'll be, it'll be hard work and very frustrating. So get as clear a spot to fly as you can. Uh, those lines can cut straight through to the bone if they're under a lot of tension, so keep it away from people. Uh, give yourself plenty of room to fly and a nice clear upwind area. I'm, I'm a little spoilt here. Alright, we have our kite sitting on its uh, trailing edge. I've got the brakes full on as you can see. And that's parked there fairly happily when I'm ready for it to fly. Red in the left, uh, in this case I've got black on the right but it might be blue or another colour but red is generally always on the left. I tend to fly with my uh, top finger over the power lines and the rest below. When I'm ready for it to come up, let the brakes off, point them towards the kite, just pull on the power lines and up it goes. Now this kite will fly in what we refer to as the wind, the wind window. That means it'll go up to about there, which is 12 o'clock with this kite. That's as far as it'll go that way. If I take it to the side, that's as far as it'll go that way. If I take it to the other side, that's as far as it'll go that way. That's called the window. That's the area in which the kite flies. At the edges of the window, there is very little to no power. Depending on how much wind there is, of course. 
in the middle of the window, there's your maximum power there. So that's where all your power is. If you want to avoid getting pulled around if it's too windy, then you avoid that bit of the sky and keep it out towards the edges up there. If you need a rest, you can either park it or leave it at the edge of the window. Probably low down on the, on the side of the window is better than above your head in case you get a big gust and it lifts you up. And even though these are small kites, you do have to respect the power because if you get a big gust, even a two and three metre kite can lift you off the ground quite quickly, but they're not big enough to let you float gently back down to the ground. Um, and there's been many bad injuries due to small power kites. So you do have to respect how much power they have. Now, <clears throat> to steer this, I've got oh, just a little bit of tension on the brake there, just enough to deform the edge. I don't want too much tension there. So I'm almost sort of letting that hang fairly neutral. All my pressure's on the power lines. If I want it to go left, I pull left. If I want it to go right, I pull right. First thing I do is just do some gentle figure eights and just get a feel for how it responds. Keep your hands together and out the front of you. I've seen a few quite funny uh, videos of people waving their arms out the side. Uh, that doesn't do you any good, just keep them out the front of you together like that. Pull left for left, pull right for right. Just some gentle figure eights. You can increase the speed of the turn by applying a little bit of brake. So if I pop some brake in there as well, it will turn even faster. So it'll depend on your kite whether it prefers being steered by the power lines or the brake lines. Uh, as far as the ozone imp goes and things like the ozone flow, uh, the method, Peter Lynn Hornets, HQ Beamers, they're pretty well happy being steered by either. So it's usually a combination of both. A little bit of brake, a little bit of power line to steer it. The more brake you use, the less you have to move your arms back and forth. See, I can steer that pretty well just, just twisting the brakes, pulling the brakes on and off. I've almost got full control of that. I don't have to move my hands back and forth very much at all there. <clears throat> what do you do when you want to land the kite? Well, pull both brakes on, full brakes. You might need to, to juggle it a little bit as it comes down backwards. And while you've got the brakes on, that should stay where it is. Ready to come up again. Brakes off, power lines. A little bit of pressure on the power lines and up she goes. Again, pull the brakes on. Depending on how much wind you've got and the kite you're flying, it might actually take quite a bit of pressure to pull those brakes on. Uh, this is only maybe now 9 or 10 knots with a 2.5 kite, not taking much pressure at all. Brakes off, little tug on the power lines, up she goes. Now at the edges of the window, there's not a lot of power and you will often find your kite stalling in light winds. Now, if I take that sitting, that's as far as it'll go that way, so that's sitting right on the edge, the lines are starting to lose their tension, they're going slack. I have to just walk backwards every now and then to keep it in the sky. If I want to turn it up and over, come up and over, I'll form a left line and it'll come up and over, take it to the other edge of the window, out of power there, just about stepping backwards, pulling a little, pulling some right and up and over she comes to the right. I've got to step backwards because I've got no power in the kite and I'm sort of working against gravity there. So if you find your kite is stalling there and tending to fall out of the sky a bit as you try and turn it up and over, well, in that case, use gravity for you, turn it down. I'll use a whole heap of right brake and I'll go down and under. We go down, 
I'm using gravity to take me across the wind, take me gravity to, I'm using gravity to take the kite down, keep it full of air, keep the shape, and away we go. That's much better in light winds than trying to go up and over. Use gravity for you, turn the kite down and under itself. That'll save you a lot of running backwards. By the way, you'll notice I've got my lines crossed. Uh, no problem. This should still fly nicely with many crosses in the line. Look, I can, I can loop this several times. So I've got five or six crosses in the line. I've still got control of the kite. So, and I can still steer this quite by normal. Pull in a bit of left left, pull in a bit of right to go right. Uh, now, which way to unwind? I'll try that way, get a bit more height. There we go, and we're back on line. So, edge of the window, running out of power, down and under. Use gravity to work for you, not against you. Now, the other thing you can do to stop the kite stalling at the edge of the window, and you may have to do this with a higher aspect kite, don't let it get to the edge of the window. That is, turn the kite while there's still a bit of power now, before it gets right to the very edge of the window. Remember, you're in control of the kite. You can be as aggressive as you want to with it. Tell it who's boss, and you're flying it. It's not flying you. You can get pretty good in a fairly short space of time, but the trick is your body needs to sort of almost react instinctively. So you really have to put a lot of hours in so that when you turn away from the kite and you're looking at the view or something and you turn back and oh shit, the kite's heading straight down. And you know instinctively what to do. You don't have to think about it. Because these, uh, these kites, when they get out of control, it can happen in the blink of an eye, and the better your reflexes are, the better you'll cope with it. See, I'm just using almost, almost all brake to turn that around there. Very little power line in that, or top line if you like. That turns nicely on the brakes. As soon as I've got it turned off, turned around, I'll let the brakes off. Left brake, down and under, brake off, keep it level. If you use the power line, you'll just have to pull quite a bit more, that's all, depending on the kite. Yeah, much bigger loop if I use the power line. I've got to move it a long way. But if I use the brake, little tweak of the brake and around she goes. So this kite performs quite well steering it by using the brakes. Now, if I flip that over, now if you land your kite upside down like that, all you've got to do is fly her up backwards and it'll probably flip over by itself. You fly her up backwards by pulling both brakes on full, let it flip over, let your brakes off. See if I can do that again. Both brakes on to bring her down. Now I'll let one brake off, let it flip over, let both brakes off. So I'm nose down there, pull both brakes full on, take a step back, or two as needed. You can pull one brake a little bit more than the other, roll up and over, brakes off, back on your power lines. That's the beauty with a four line kite as opposed to the two line. You can launch it if it's upside down uh, on its side. Now, if you've got some twists in the line that you want to get out, like you can see I've got here, keep your handles together and rotate the whole lot together. Like so. I'm keeping the brakes on. That's clear back. Best way to deal with a kite once you've got it on the ground Grab your weights, 
round the edge of the kite. Nice big handful of material there, right on the edge, and walk straight into the wind. Kite just billows out behind you, no power. And then you can weight it, stick your knee on it, and fold it up as you need to. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a two meter kite or a 10 meter kite, that works nicely. I really need a land board, don't I?